The Grace House flag was a common sight along both U.S. coasts, the Caribbean and the west coast of South America. The sailing ship painting shown is in Grace's Valparaiso, Chile office, and it depicts the downeaster W.R. Grace of the 1870s. In 1946, Grace Line built and placed into service nine C2-type combination vessels, carrying 52 passengers and 8,000 tons of cargo. Six were put on the New York to Chile run. The other three went on the Caribbean route. The next group of slides depicts scenes from a typical 42-day voyage from New York to Chile and return. Most photos were taken on the Santa Isabella in 1955. Santa Isabel docked at New York's Pier 58. Discharging and loading of general cargo went on day and night for four days. General cargo meant everything from automobiles to eggs. Backing out of Pier 58, her next stops will be Philadelphia and Baltimore. A dusting of snow covers the deck cargo. And Chesapeake Bay is found choked with ice. Now on the way to Panama, a bit of nasty weather is encountered off Cape Hatteras. beginning the Panama Canal transit. In the background, a sister ship is seen going northbound. Santa Isabel, as seen from the Panama Railroad train. A trio of nuns have a good view of the canal passage from the ship's flying bridge. In Gatun Lake, the largest man-made freshwater lake at the time, and a good time for a freshwater washdown. A view of the bridge, although a pilot is in charge, Captain Davis keeps his eye on things. Captain N.C. Davis on his bridge. This well-known skipper had a long career with Grace Line. Two cheerful electricians pose for the photographer while on the eight-hour Panama transit. First port after leaving Panama is Buenaventura, Colombia. This scene shows Santa Maria ready to discharge general cargo. Next stop is Guayaquil, Ecuador, where Santa Isabel anchors off Puna Island and unloads general cargo into barges. Callao, Peru is one of Grace's main ports. The pilot boat is seen approaching here. Santa Isabel, Dr. Callao. It's Sunday and the longshoresmen are not working. Moyendo in southern Peru was an anchorage port. Santa Isabel is tied to the buoys fore and aft. Still, there's a lot of rolling. ashore in Moyendo, one takes a launch to the town jetty, where you're lifted off the launch by means of an ancient steam winch. Mm -hmm. 
Now off the Chilean coast, Santa Isabel meets another sister ship and whistle salutes are exchanged in the sunset. The ship is anchored off Arica, Chile, not far south of the Peruvian border. While at Arica, the deck gang touches up paintwork. The white object over the swimming pool is the big movie screen. Unloading melons from a boxcar at Chile's major port, Valparaiso. Fresh fruit in season constituted a major northbound cargo. Forty miles south of Valparaiso, Santa Isabel loads copper at San Antonio. San Antonio is an artificial port. Notice the surf just outside the breakwater. Santa Isabel turns around at San Antonio, 5,000 miles from New York, and calls at Antofagasta, Chile, for more copper. Another call is made at Callao, Peru, where refined metals are taken on. The steam locomotives disappeared after a few years, replaced by diesels. An unscheduled call is made off of Chimbote, Peru, where frozen fish is loaded. Passengers are enjoying the scene from the wing of the bridge. Once more off Puna, Ecuador, Santa Isabel takes on 20,000 stems of bananas loaded into her side ports by a steady stream of workers. Bananas were major revenue earners for the Grace Line and were laden both southbound and northbound. While Santa Isabel was loading bananas, Grace Line's luxurious Santa Rosita takes passengers upriver on a 40-mile excursion to Guayaquil. Another call is made at Buena Ventura, Colombia, where the ship tops off 6,000 tons of cargo already on board with another 1,000 tons of coffee. Transiting the canal northbound, a Pacific steam navigation ship is seen going the opposite way. This transit of the canal extends into twilight hours. Five days later, Santa Isabel at the right is once more docked at Grace's New York terminal where she will load cargo for yet another voyage. Meanwhile, the other three combination ships are busy on 21-day trips to the Caribbean ports. They do not have facilities for refrigerated fruit, but are otherwise almost identical with the ships on the Chilean run. One of the Caribbean combos, Santa Monica, is shown high and dry at a Baltimore shipyard for her annual checkup. The combos remained in Grace Line service in the 60s. Santa Monica was sold in 1963. Her buyers defaulted and she was returned in 1964. She's shown here in San Francisco, loading for the Far East. Santa Monica was sold again in 1967 and renamed Cosmos Trader. She lasted two more years and went to the scrapyard in 1969. 
A sister ship, Santa Sophia, was sold to the same company, Cosmos Trading, and renamed Cosmos Mariner. She's seen here on San Francisco Bay. Santa Isabel was sold to Anchorage Shipping in 1968 and renamed Sophia. Her stack colors changed a little, blue apparently substituted for green. She is shown in San Francisco in December 1969. Santa Cecilia went to the same firm and was renamed Julia. By 1970, all nine of the combination ships had been scrapped 